Hey everybody, Radaman here. Thanks for tuning in to Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord, a Let's Play tutorial series, episode 30. Recap of the rules and goals we have for our series. And pick it up where we left off, we had just ended in a bit of a cliffhanger. We were sieging Amatatis, and um, we got attacked by a force about twice our size and survived it. Barely, but survived it. Uh, and we're picking up where we left off there. Uh, so I wanted to go over two suggestions or tips I got from Andy. Andy mentions one, then I gave my noble bow to the wrong person. I gave it to Richard, not Damien, my, uh, my husband. Uh, so that's a mistake that I'm going to have to fix at the end of this siege, because it's going to be too difficult to fix at the start. And then the second one was I misspoke about what governors do. Uh, they just manage towns and provide uh, like passive benefits to you know, construction speed and the like like that. So here we are at the Amatata Siege, and I want this siege to last pretty much as long as we can make it. Uh, because, of course, the longer it lasts, the more our troops heal up. Right now, majority of our troops are wounded, right? Uh, 98 are, are healthy and 151 are wounded. We have plenty of food, and... The act of besieging this town will help to level up our um, engineering anyway. So the longer I can make the siege last, the better. Um, I am going to pick Stiff Upper Blip for additional security because additional security will might help, help me um, befriend nearby notables. And then we have a, a few of the prisoners. Okay, so there are some issues here. One is that... Um, Oh, no, I guess it's fine. But I need to trade that Imperial Veteran Archer to one of my uh, party members. So talk to Damien. Inspect troops. He's full, but I'm going to pull one of the Valandians that he has. Oh, he doesn't have Valandians. Okay, never mind. I'll talk to Trustin. Thanks for the conversation, Damien. Hey, Trustin. You want to do a little bit of horse trading? Wait, you don't have Valandians either? Alright, well here's an archer. Oh, well, he's not full-sized. So he, I just handed him an archer. And any real prisoner, any prisoners that I uh, recruit, I can throw to trust him. Alright, so let's speed up the clock here a bit. So we've got Dysborian, we've got, yeah, we've got Phaeus, we got a few people stacking up to attack us. Not enough to tip the scales. They're not going to push me until they perceive themselves to be a much larger force. And there we go. My relationship just increased, I think, because of the stiff upper lip I I, uh, I picked. Um, and it looks like my engineering just hit enough to get construction expert, which increases the speed of castle walls. Um... Building castles and walls increased by 30% when I'm governor. So, cool. Oh, one of their attackers is actually leaving. Making the likelihood of us me being uh, forced to attack early even lower. Another thing I wanted to show is in the Kingdom tab here, in the Diplomacy... We can propose making peace uh, with, like, Southern Empire. And as you can see here, um, the Southern Empire, I could propose it. It would cost me influence. It would not cost money. Sometimes it costs money. The times it costs money is when um, they think they're winning. Uh, there's also, let's see, there's also some policies I could enact given my 224 influence. And I am going to enact grazing rights. Settlement loyalty is increased, and daily militia production increased. Not really any downsides to that. So, that's a that's a bit of an obvious freebie. Alright, so now they actually are starting to get some forces here. Um, so now that I've built my two siege towers and my battering ram, I am going to first, uh, let's go ahead and switch my gear around. It's going to be hard to remember to do that every time. But, uh... I'm going to want to not take a Rumfalia. Rumfalias are fun little weapons, but they're absolutely miserable 
when you uh, are trying to attack a base. And then also let's make sure our stack bodkin arrows are locked out so we don't accidentally sell them. Uh, on top of that, some armor to pass around. Uh, I'm done with that. Okay. So let's lead an assault. So all of the forces you saw mustered on that bridge, none of them chose to breach my siege and attack me. So it's just me versus the, the town right now and no one interfering, which is pretty cool because this town did not have a lot of defenders. And because of my longer siege, I actually managed to starve out uh, some of their additional defenders as well. Actually, just shooting their uh, their uh, siege equipment here. All right, speaking of siege equipment, mine is getting pushed up to the wall. Uh, I am. Oh, you know what? I know where to go. So this this castle here has kind of a U shape, which means it's very difficult to find a covered spot to shoot from that's closer. Except for, of course. Right underneath this bridge. This gives me a whole lot of good cover. Oh yeah, it does. If I could, you know, shoot accurately, which... There we go. Someone's shooting at me from up top to the right. Now the problem is, the bow that I'm using is not a... It's a really good bow, but it's more of a horse archer bow. And not one that's great for super long range. Like a hickory crossbow or a noble bow might be. That's okay, as long as I'm staying mostly protected and covered... Oh, you're dead. All right, so our siege towers are about to deploy. So I'm going to go join my men in their uh, tower siege. I don't see a lot of arrows coming out of that left uh, turret, or whatever you want to call it. The left uh, defense platform. Castle, I don't know. Turret. We'll go with turret. So let's go ahead and assault the main walls. The mangonel could be de destroyed if I wanted to, but I think... Oh, yeah, they do have someone, someone here. I think the chances of that mangonel being used against me at this point, now that we've overrun it, is pretty low, so it would be a waste of my time. This year, not a waste of my time. If I can get behind them... I can split their attention. Oh, actually, all my troops just died. There we go. Back up. Much easier. Another one of the advantages, actually, of leaving up the siege equipment is the enemy AI will continually um, try to send people to man siege equipment, like Ballista and Manganel and all that, uh, which then draws defenders away from their defense positions and puts them one at a time towards the siege equipment. Just a little heads up there. Okay, so we won. We're going to capture all the prisoners. We gained a whole bunch of influence, taking a look at their armor, eh, there really wasn't much to be had. A lot of money's worth, but not a lot of value's worth. 
All right, so Amatatus has been taken. The first thing I want to do here is to fix... Well, the first thing I want to do is to maybe go for peace, dipl diplomatic peace. So as you can see here, proposing peace right now would cause me 380 tribute a day. Um, Amatatus gives me 1,300 tribute a, uh, money a day. So it's worth it. I'm just going to use my influence. They could have rejected it, but they basically set the price. I'm going to use my influence to form peace with them. And then I get to keep Amatatus, and I only pay a fraction of the income that Amatatus generates for me uh, as tribute to them. And it's not forever, it's just for the length of the peace agreement. Um, so taking a look at what they have queued up. Yeah, eh, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Alright, so the first thing I want to do here is to go to the garrison. And I want to dump, um, not all, but a fair portion of my troops off in the garrison. And this is so that I can disband... Um, I can disband Damien's uh, party and absorb all of his troops. So I need I need a bunch of extra space to do that. But I don't want to send everything into the garrison because then my prisoner capacity will tank. So let's take a look at what it is now. My prisoner capacity, yeah, I'm over capacity here by a bit. But another thing I could do is temporarily recruit a few of their troops. And then immediately talk to Damien and say, hey, Damien, you know what? Uh, let me inspect your troops. I'm going to take them all. Done. I don't care that I'm over capacity. That's fine. Because I'm standing here at the city uh, where I can... I can um, put more of the troops into garrison. So keep garrison, and this is the this is the the hoops you have to jump uh, if you go over troop capacities, or if you uh, if you if you need to trade with your party. The next step is if I want to trade with Damien, I have to go to his party and disband him. He's now disbanded, and he's going to be in the Lord's Hall here, because it's the closest town. So there he is. Okay, uh, let's go join my party. Now he's back in the party, and I can modify his equipment. A bunch of uh, a bunch of hoops to jump. Not gonna lie. Uh, so now if I go to Damien's equipment, I can see he is the Step Recurve Bow. That's incorrect. If I go to Richard the Stag, he is the Noble Bow. That's incorrect. Let's switch to these. Step Recurve Bow to you. And Damien, you are going to take the Noble Bow. Uh, I am going to steal Damien's helmet. Because it's better and it looks better than my own. And then I'll give Damien the helmet I had on. Uh, I'm going to give him a better cape. And let's see about better boots. Maybe better gloves if I have them. No, I don't have better gloves. Uh, better arrows, perhaps? These stacked bodkins are mine, so I'm not going to give them that. But I'll give them the splintered range arrows. It's not not ideal. Um, and then let's go and give him... Let's see, what is the best horse I have? Sturgeon Hunter? Yeah, I'll give him a slightly better Hunter. Done. Now, I go back to the party screen and I create a new party, Damien. Actually, before I do that, let's go to... No, 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 it's fine. Um, party screen. Go to Damien. I really wish there was a, like, let me trade items with you prompt, but there just isn't. Alright, before I... Uh... Before I give him any party members, I wanted to level up the ones I had. And now I'm going to dump off all of the non volandians to him. So that I don't have non volandians violating my, uh, my rules. 
I know I kept some of the clan warriors, it's because one of them leveled up. And I failed to notice. Alright, Damien. Troops. Done. And then go to the garrison. Take the remainder of my troops. Done. Now, uh, what I could do is any because neither of these um neither of these armies are necessarily all of the way full. First things first, I'm going to disband. Let me disband the army, and then create a new one because these are my own clan. I don't have to pay influence for them, and I might as well have full cohesion. Uh, Amatadas, I am going to dump all sorts of money in you so that you improve quickly. Uh, but I'm not going to necessarily assign a governor. I don't think I have a good one. Yeah, no, I don't really have a good one. I could go around and uh, buy up the workshops, though. Uh, so, Lippa, you produce grain and you produce horses. Horses and grain are the local economy. More grain... Just because I don't own the town doesn't mean that I can't benefit necessarily from its surplus. So grain and horses seems to be the thing. So let me go um, to the tavern district. Oh, the, the only problem with the way I formed peace is the nobles that I had imprisoned. Um, I didn't really get to, to make money off of, but whatever. All right, let's visit the tavern. And then walk around and go to the uh, workshops. Because I do have money to invest in workshops so we've got the olive press the tannery and the pottery shop now you don't necessarily have to match the workshops production with the surplus um, that a town has it's just that if you have a surplus and you produce it into a better good uh, the chances of you making more money is 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 improved. All right, so we're looking for just a tradesman. Here we are. I want to buy it. Yes. We're going to turn it into um a huh. Yeah, brewery. All right, and then before I invest in the other workshops, I'm just going to see naturally over time what kind of surplus we gain here, which is would where to look for that would be in here. Just look at like Amatadas, what you gain. So right now it looks like we gain a lot of uh, grain, but uh, I'll come back, you know, in a month and and see sort of what this place is good at producing. But before I do that, let's go ahead and sell some of the equipment I don't need. So I'm really not going to need um, all of these weapons because I'm never going to have the stamina to smith them all. So I'm going to sell those weapons. Um, the armor here, I don't believe befits anyone. So I'll sell that as well. And I'll sell my harnesses that I'm not going to need. My cow, my hog basically bankrupts Amatadas, but gives me a whole lot of money. So next up, I'm going to want to do a mix of healing, um, but I'm also going to want to probe for weaknesses elsewhere. So if you take a look at my um, my current dinars, as you can see, the tribute payments are already negative 243. It's a small fraction. Nope, but Batania just declared war on me. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's a thing. So Bash, you leveled up in riding. Let's give you nomadic traditions. And Free Dog. You gained a free focus point. We'll have you learn the bow a little bit more. Alright, so if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to immediately just piece Britannia, it would cost me 530 tribute a day. I think what I'm gonna do is poke for weaknesses to see if there's anything I can easily take from them before I, you know, form peace. Because I do, I want 
to reinforce my army, but I do have a pretty good amount of troops. So Phasos is under attack, which is here in Amatatis. Uh, it's not a deal. I don't want them attacking me, but... Borch of the Lake Rats, but... Um, but taking a look at Rote here. Rote is... Really not particularly well defended. So my plan is to try to take Rote and then form peace. But I'll have to vary. I'm going to have to play on um, slower speed because I really want to keep a close eye on the news feed. Um, because there's a there's a there's a possibility of uh, them sieging or besieging something important to me, like let's say Legata. I'm going to want to immediately um, create peace. And yeah, it's kind of exploity, uh, but whatever. I'm playing within the the limits of the you know, within the rules of the game. Alright, so Valandian just got uh, imprisoned by Azurai. They must be at war. Uh, we do have a sizable, probably non-survivable war party here at, from Aaron, but it, he doesn't seem to be traveling our way. Now, these nobles around me number in the many, and if any more nobles show up, they're going to attack me. Now, right now, I could attack Rote, uh, but I don't really have any siege equipment, which would put me at a pretty sizable disadvantage. And it's situations like these where you'd really want, um, where you'd really want companions. Like, I really wish, or not companions, uh, vassals. I really wish there was, like, some pretty sizable vassal armies that I could draw from. That would be, that would be excellent. It's just not the case. So I recruited some additional prisoners that I can hand over to Trustin. Now the thing is, if I do do a siege on them, um, I'm going to have not enough troops to survive the army that they have sitting out here. So we do have one siege tower. Oh, and we were just declared war on by Azurai. I'm not really going to be able to um, face a two-front war here. So I'm going to suck it up because I make a ton of money by using my influence to peace Azurai, which put me puts me at a bit risk of um, not having the influence to do the same for Botania here. Okay, now I'm going to lead the assault. I don't think I have any more time. I think we're down to the wire. Um, and what I'll try to do is once we capture Rote, let's see that we do. Uh, if and when we capture Rote, we, uh, we form peace the old-fashioned way by paying for it. There's a very fair chance that they don't even agree to a payment terms of peace. Uh, just to throw that out, because towns are worth a whole lot more to kingdoms than um, than castles are. So they may say, shove it, when I'm going, hey, you know, how about we pay for peace here? That's a, that's a, a honestly, a quite likely uh, scenario. And I just have to be careful, because I'm a big old target standing out here. There's not a lot of cover that I could take. Good lord, my accuracy is really bad. My, just, my aiming reticle arrow doesn't close very much. person? I can't tell. And let's not take any other additional damage that we can avoid. Wait for our siege equipment. Unless we can hit a, a legendary distant arrow. I'll take a few, few shots. No, I'm not going to hit that. 
All right, let's see if there's uh, any other weak points where we can nestle ourselves in. There's a lot of people on that wall. Oh, it's a very bad time to come to a halt. So here goes the siege tower. And I'll probably join the siege tower on the left. So I'll park my horse here. Nothing like slamming your horse nose for first into a wall. And climb. Now, if I do succeed to capture this town and somehow pay for a peace with Batania, I'm really going to need to go on a recruiting spree. Um, because I'm simply not going to have enough forces to defend my holdings. People are going to look at my kingdom and say, oh god, that's going to hurt. Yep, rip my leaves. I will fast forward this fight. I might have crazy good armor, but none of it is going to be good enough to defend me from gravity. So my my losses from my misstep there really not great. But hey, we learned an important lesson: don't fall. Still going to be a win, but uh, not having me on the field is makes it hard to be effective. All right, we're just cleaning up the remaining survivors, and there it is. Gained influence, gained renown, and gained a little bit of shame too. Um, all right, let's recruit who we can. We free up uh, a little bit of space for prisoners. I'm going to... Um, level up all that we can as well. So 68, so we can add a few more of these guys. So f just a few more. Done. Oh, wait, I have a terrible bow on. Why do I have such a garbage bow? That would be why I'm having an extraordinary hard time making any of my shots, because I have this just low-tier weapon. Well, I'm glad it's, it's not me. Alright, so Rote has fallen. Um, now, my options here are to use, and this is probably what I'll do, I'm going to go to Diplomacy and propose a really, really high... Uh, uh, tribute, but to form um, peace with Batania that way. Because I'm in no position, if they reject me paying for my um, uh, paying for peace, I'm in no position to be able to actually refute their rejection and defend myself. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to snipe a bow from Richard the Stag. That's the bow I want. Sorry, Rich. I'm uh, I'm still I'm stealing your bow, uh, even though I've fairly certainly demonstrated how terrible I am with it. Although you're getting a tier five bow, it's not terrible. So at this point, it's going to be probably let's manage Rote. Make sure that we are. Um, Improving what needs to be improved. Alright, so I'm going to actually cancel some of the queue here. I'm going to drop a whole lot of money in it to boost it up quickly. And leave its workshops alone. In terms of character here, three dog leveling up in medicine. Okay, uh, bonus 10% heal rate. Resting in towns, or high morale increases the heal rate by 10%. I'm going to do high morale increases heal rate, because my morale is always very, very, very high. So, that's a lot more useful to me. So, we are paying a considerable amount of tribute, but our expected change is still super amazing, right? We're making money hand over fist, given all the things that we own. We own a ton of fiefs. 
So that I'm not so worried about. Um, so now I'm heading into Valandian territory to do a mix of um, uh, doing a mix of recruiting to supplement my troops again because we've lost a considerable amount of troops, and then maybe possibly uh, adding some Valandian nobles to our kingdom. So let's go all the way up to Sarga. Oh, there's a garrison over here? Hold on, I'm going back. <laughs> Just one troop. Okay, all right. <laughs> I rode all the way back for one dude. Sure. All right. So at this, at this point, um, it would be very, very wise of me to any noble that I can manage to talk to that isn't in army that I would want to recruit uh, to try to recruit. And then, if I do manage to get him, um, to propose, and this costs a lot of influence, but to propose that they own one of my fiefs. So, that's going to be very, very important, because there's only so many parties that I can field uh, without necessarily involving vassals. And I'm getting to the point where I can barely do enough recruiting to add forces to my army quick enough to replenish troops that I'm losing. But vassals do it. Actually, in a way, vassals kind of cheat, uh, as do the AI. The AI adds troops to their armies like far faster than a player is able, which is kind of weird, but it just is the way it is. And we're going to use that to our advantage rather than complain about the disadvantage by, uh, I don't buy an Asurai horse, by setting ourselves up so that um, we're going to use vassals to defend our territory. Okay, so let me go ahead and sell off some of the things I don't need. The stack bog canaros I'll keep. Uh, I'm not going to need necessarily all of these weapons. I'm going to keep some. I'll keep some of them, but not all of them, because we're not going to get through the smithing queue uh, all that quickly. I just need a few weapons to work on. And then, as far as armor goes, I don't believe any of this armor is worth anything to anyone, so I'll just blanket sell it. Horses, we'll lock in that Azurai horse. And then I was looking to possibly buy some food. Yeah, there's a lot of grapes. And a lot of grain. Fish, meat, cheese, butter, olives, dates, beer. And this keeps my large army fed with high morale. Perfect. Done. With the money I have, it wouldn't hurt to possibly look at armor to buy. Uh, no, nothing amazing. These uh, plate boots, no, well, I can't benefit from them. Certainly one of my companions could, but... Here's a level 6 blade that I'll buy myself. So when I'm uh, when I'm one-handed, I'll have a really, really good blade. Azura and Valandi mid-piece. So let's take a look at uh, the global politics. Northern Empire and Sturgia doesn't really matter because 
God knows you guys are crushed. And I'm at peace with everyone else. So Kuzait is at war with Batania and Azurai. So, okay. And as you can see, here are the days that my peace agreements are going to last. So it's a pretty long amount of time that I have. Um, meaning that uh, I'm not at necessarily risk of being attacked. The only problem is, of course, the tribute that I'm paying them is somewhat sizable, which could make them stronger, but I'm earning more money from what I captured, so I just have to make sure that I'm turning the money that I captured uh, into armies stronger than what they're gaining, if that makes sense. Uh, again, the need to add more uh, add more vassals. I could create one more party. The trouble is, it would probably be Can that would I would want as the last additional party. But um, the issue with that, of course, is uh, Can right now is on caravan, so I'd have to cancel a caravan if I wanted to do that. Valandia just declared war on me. Okay, I'm not thrilled about that, but uh, it's possible I add something nice to my territory, some native Valandian territory, and then I could start working on increasing my rep, which is something I've always wanted to do. And the reason why uh, tons and tons of um, the other kingdoms are declaring war on me uh, like dominoes is because I own a lot of territory and they perceive me to be pretty weak. Alright, Thractatory Castle's under siege. Uh, Sargot has honestly just too many defenders to be able to uh, do anything about. Oh, and the Crusades. I can't fight a two-front war. Um, so I almost have enough uh, influence. To, I'll have enough influence tomorrow to settle out with Crusade. And I'm going to duke it out with Valandia. Deathert here is the Valandian king. And I'm riding straight up to him to fight him. He's not going to like that. I think my garrison... Oh, no, no, it's not my garrison. Um... All right, if they wanted peace, as you can see here, they're demanding everything. Literally everything I own, basically, for peace. Uh, let's see what they're not demanding. Nothing. They literally even want my Rumfalia. Okay. Yeah, no, screw you. Uh, surrender or die. I don't care. Fight. Yeah, I won't be bowing to no Valandian king. So Damien is going to be the captain of the archers. So all of the captain benefits that he has benefits the archers and trust him for infantry. Um... Alright, so let's... Infantry I should have uh, reassigned parties. I hadn't. I didn't. Should have, but I didn't. Um, I think I'm just going to line my troops up in the field here and use that hill as sort of a natural uh, break. So who's six? Who are you guys? You guys are just regular Infantry! Valandian footmen. Uh, you can hold the wall up Get here with it! them. Now, unfortunately, I ha don't have my Rumfalia. I have my uh, sword and board. Increases my survivability, but it doesn't necessarily um, doesn't necessarily help me kill their Archers! leaders all that effectively. Alright, having my guys push up, because they are, obviously, as you can see, hanging back and not really planning on pushing up. God, this bow is so much better than the last one. I was wondering what happened. Okay, let's see if I'm close enough that my crossbowmen are going to engage.
Nope. Bankrupt! Oh, but they're pushing up. Okay, great. Okay, get into position quickly. Here we go. Now there should be a big old volley. I'm gonna go after the kings or their nobles, whatever vassals. It'd be a lot easier if I had my run folly, but that's my own fault. All right, I am getting hit by their. Um... Oh, he just fell. I wounded him enough. He went down. Here's Deathert, the king. Oh, it's a little high. I'm going to lock onto Deathert because, of course, he is the trophy. Ouch. And he's probably brink of death. Down goes Dether, the Valandian King. All right, I've taken considerable uh, damage. Infantry! Come on, I don't want to talk to my infantry. Soldiers! In All right, they're falling back, so I'm pushing forward. Last arrow. They're mostly crossbowmen at this point. Crossbows are very dangerous to a very wounded horseman like I am. But, uh. Yep, oh, there it is. Alright, let's fast forward the remainder of this fight. So, as you can see, it turns into amorphous blob versus amorphous blob because I wanted to risk it. There's my reinforcements. There's the last of their forces. It's going to be very Pyrrhic. But, hey, I took out Deathert myself, so I'm okay with this. So, um, they lost twice as many as I did. And the real joy is most of the prisoners we're going to take. You're my prisoner. You're my prisoner. You're my prisoner. Most of the prisoners we're going to take. Uh, well, actually. All right. So we got a bunch of, of troops um, as prisoners because these guys had captured troops in the past. So I'm going to take all the prisoners off of their hands. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of some of the uh, Imperials and, and others. Um, focusing first on ditching the low levels. So that when I add people, I'm primarily adding Volandians. And I'm a little over still. So let me get rid of some of these. Uh... Wow, still? OK. 
Okay, we're getting close, we're getting close. I know I'm getting rid of pretty high level guys as prisoner, but uh... Okay, one more. Cool. So now we have just a ton of, oh, let me get rid of the Valandian recruits, Sturgeon Soldier. Uh, there was some that snuck their way in here. I'm gonna change it up again and add some of these Valandians back. Actually, give me all the Valandians. Forget, forget the Imperials. Done. Uh, not a ton that's worth much as loot. I mean, there's a lot of loot. We took down Deathert, but not a ton of it. Okay, so we still obviously have a pretty decently sized standing army. Uh, a considerable amount of my troops right now in my personal army are um, non valandian so I gotta fix that. But let me first off... Let's see. Hmm. So the issue here is if I... I'm just gonna need to heal up. Even though I know I have Valandians in my army. Uh, the, the problem with this is that if I... If I uh, give away these non-Valandians, my prisoner capacity will tank. And I'll have to basically lose prisoners. Right? I don't want to do that. Um... Especially given the high stakes battle that we're currently in. And uh, next up, let me ride to Orticia. But actually, you know what? I'm out of time. So we're going to have to figure out this war against Valandia next episode. Thank you so very much for watching, guys. If you have any feedback for me, do drop me a line in the comments below. I'll catch you all next episode. Adios, friends.